And the other indication of what is going to manifest is the quantity. How often do you think this thought? How powerful is that thought? And how often do you think it? Is it just over, over, boom, 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 boom? <laughs> Greetings, greetings. Welcome to another episode of The Weekly Awakening. My name is Taraku Day with Awaken Within, and today we're diving deeper into dream symbols and talking about the different floors and levels within a house and what those, each of those represent, because there's a reason why you're on the first floor versus the second floor, the third floor versus the basement, you know, and so these different spaces and where you're at will represent different things. So like we said before in the places uh, video on what, pl what different places mean in your dream. Go check that out if you want more info on that. But what we discuss is how places, different places will represent the different places that you exist within your mind, your state of mind. So different floors and levels within a home will have the same indication or represent different states of mind. But these will be specific divisions of the mind. Now your mind, you are not your mind. You are not your body. You are not your soul. You know, your consciousness is separate of all of that. Your essence is more than that. However, we do use our mind like a tool to in order, in able to understand ourselves and experience the world with, around us and within us. Within the mind, there are three different divisions, the conscious, the subconscious, and the superconscious. So the higher you go within a home, the deeper you're going within your consciousness. So the first floor will represent the conscious mind, the second floor will represent the subconscious mind, and the third floor will represent the superconscious mind. Today, we're going to go deeper into the first floor and the conscious mind. The conscious mind is the part of the mind that your physical body uses, your reasoning mind. It's what helps you reason through things. You know, the, the three keys to reasoning are your uh, memory, attention, and imagination. You know, your memory to help you understand the past, your attention to help you understand the, the present, and your imagination to help you understand the future. You know, your memory gives you access to experience the past. Your attention gives you access to experience the present. And the, your imagination gives you access to experience the future. For example, if you're fully engrossed in a past memory, or daydreaming and fully engrossed in your imagination, then someone can be talking to you or you can be doing something or paying or supposed to be watching something or, or something going on around you. You have no clue what's going on because your attention is not here in the present moment. It is within the imagination or the memory. And so with these three things uh, in mind, attention, memory, and imagination, you'll want to pay attention to the context of the dream. What's going on on the first floor? You know, why are you on the first floor, not the second floor? You know, are there people? Can you see the second floor? Can you see below you? Can you see outside? Can you see inside? You know, can you see through the windows, um, which will represent awareness? Is there something that you're unaware of? Are the walls blocked? Are the doors sealed? You know, are you trying to protect yourself from, from facing something within you? You know, you want to look at all of these things, and all of it is dealing with something playing out within your conscious mind. Another big thing that I like to pay attention to within dreams, in homes and things like that, in the conscious mind, the first floor, is, is it messy? Is it dirty? Is it cluttered? Or is the space clear? You know, that'll help you indicate the uh, current state of your own conscious mind. You know, is it cluttered and messy and, and needs some cleaning up? You know, you need to start doing some concentration exercises to help garner your attention. You know, are, are, you, are you going from one room to the next, to the next, to the next? You know, use your attention jumping from one thing to another. You know, maybe you're in the kitchen on the first floor. The kitchen represents, you know, preparing knowledge within your life experiences, you know, because food represents knowledge. And check out that video for more information on that. The knowledge that you gain from your experiences within life, you can, you know, if you learn a lesson in life, it doesn't necessarily have to be one that you stumble across. You know, you, you have a, uh, you get fired from your job and you learn that, you know, are having difficulties with authority. And so you kind of stumble across that lesson. You learn that lesson. Well, being in a kitchen, you're then preparing the food. So it's more like, you know, I'm going to go out into these into my life and I'm going to make sure that I uh, learn a lesson of being more patient. So then you're kind of preparing your experiences before you even go into it, before you even have access to the knowledge to consume it. You know, you've already prepared your experience in order to learn that lesson. So that's kind of, you know, being more having more foresight in what you're learning and growing and understanding about yourself versus just learning as an afterthought after the experience has been completed and you and you've already gone through it. So, you know, maybe that's going on in the in the first level. All of that is talking about your conscious mind. You know, your conscious mind is molded by your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind's primary duty and job is to manifest the thoughts within the conscious mind. But you may have many different thoughts and conflicting thoughts, you know, within the conscious mind. So the subconscious mind has to filter that out and determine which ones are to be manifested. 
And the way it does this is through the quality of the thought, meaning how strong of a thought that is. So more so your beliefs hold more weight because your belief, a belief is just a thought you continue to think. And so the stronger a belief, the more you think something, then the stronger you hold that belief, the more weight it'll have within the subconscious mind to fall and manifest into the physical. And the other indication of what is going to manifest is the quantity. How often do you think this thought? How powerful is that thought? And how often do you think it? Is it just over, over, boom, 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 constant beating within your mind? Then you're going to manifest that, you know, for, for example, a lot of people have different thoughts about, uh, you know, self-worth and self-value. And so those beliefs of not being worthy enough, which a lot of them come from like birth trauma, you know, their very first experience in life. Um, and not being treated very well as, as babies during the birthing process. But anyways, that's a whole nother video. For a lot of people, that is a very powerful belief. And it is at the core of so many other thoughts. You know, their thoughts about money, their thoughts about their relationships and how they interact with other people, their thoughts about their position at work, all may stem from this core belief of their own value and self-worth. So that is a very powerful belief and it continues to happen. So the subconscious mind is like, oh, you know, this is what you want me to manifest. More experiences enforcing your belief that you have no value or no worth. You know, so that person may, you know, think, oh, I need to I, and identify and become self-aware. I need more value, more self-value, more self-worth. And so they may, you know, think, oh, I'm going to I'm going to write an affirmation. I am valuable. I am worthy on a post-it note and set it on my mirror and. When I go to brush my teeth, I'm going to say my affirmation in the morning and, and at night. And so that's just two times a day that you've said this affirmation, this new, this new thought that you're trying to form a new belief. I am worthy. I am valuable. And then immediately you go and hop into your piece of junk car and you drive to your piece of junk job and you have all these issues with your boss. You don't want to get fired because you need the money and you don't have a lot of money. You, know, you don't have a lot of value. <laughs> and so all of these other things all throughout the day that are just reinforcing this other belief, you know, it's like David versus Goliath times 200, you know, there's like no chance that this smaller thought that you're saying two times a day will have an effect. And so without getting too carried away with that, I was just trying to set that as an example for you to, to kind of illustrate how the subconscious mind then selects which thoughts within the conscious mind to manifest. So when you're in your dream and looking around throughout the conscious mind, you know, if things are needing, things are all cluttered and, and needing cleaned up, then that's, uh, you know, you need to clean up your, your thoughts. You know, you need to get all of these erratic thoughts and tidy them up. Make sure each thought has its own place. Be very meticulous about the thoughts that you think. There's many different ways to do that, but essentially that's what your dream is telling you that you'll benefit the most from is by, is by kind of cleaning up and, and creating space within your mind. Another thing that I like to look at within dreams on the first floor is the light. Is there a lot of light? As, as you know from the other video on what light means, it represents awareness. You know, the more light within a room in your dream, the more awareness you have. So if there's a lot of light in that dream in the, on the first floor, then there's a lot of awareness of your conscious thoughts and what's going on within your conscious mind. If it's very dark and things, then there's a lot of unawareness. You know, you need to bring, be more aware of your thoughts. You know, you're not very aware of your thoughts. They're just kind of running on autopilot, which just means you're kind of a slave to the thoughts that you think within your mind just automatically because those thoughts are what's going to be uh, communicated to the subconscious mind on what you want manifested. So the more awareness you have within the th those thoughts, the more power you have over what thoughts you think and how often you think them, which will then determine the quality and the quantity of the thoughts that you want manifested from the subconscious mind. So light is very important and what to pay attention to within a dream uh, uh, um, on the first floor. And another thing that happens often within a dream on the first floor is you can either, like, can you see the second floor? You know, sometimes you can, the floor is clear and you can just see through it, or, you know, there is no floor separating the first and first, second floor and you can kind of see up and there's people up there and you're kind of talking with them or just like, expectating and watching what they're doing or something, you know, whatever's going on. You have to look at the context of the dream, what else is happening? But as far as the first floor, if you're able to, uh, have an awareness of the second floor, you know, if you're able to perceive it at all within the dream, then that will indicate more conscious awareness of your subconscious mind. And check out the video on subconscious mind and conscious mind and the kind of the difference between that and the video on, you know, the difference between the mind and the brain. 
those are two totally separate things. We're not talking about left brain, right brain. You know, that's that although those do function and tie in to the conscious and subconscious minds, they each have relationships with that. But it, that's like the difference between, you know, uh, the computer and you. You know, there's a difference between between those two. You know, the, the brain is the hardware and the mind, you know, is what programs that hardware. Anyways, if there if you're aware of the second floor, then there's more awareness of your subconscious intuitive mind within your conscious mind, which is which is really good, really powerful. Or if there's not, you know, if you just can't see there's, you know, maybe there's even a void and you can't even see the ceiling that's separating two, then that's going to represent that you need to cultivate more awareness and become more consciously aware of your subconscious mind, practice and in intuitive building exercises. So I hope this video helped you. Be sure to check out the other videos on the conscious, subconscious mind, super conscious mind, uh, the other videos on the second and third floor uh, or attic and basement. Uh, and I hope this helps you understand your dreams because your dreams are going to help you understand yourself. And with that, I leave you in peace.